Okay. Happy Monday. Back another week of, of logarithms, our new best friend. Uh, so today we're just looking at uh, three properties of logarithms. And it's just ways you can manipulate uh, different expressions you're going to see. So we can rewrite them in a form that's more useful to us. And then later on this week, we'll see what situation we need them to be as we learn more about everything we can do with logarithms. Okay, so basic idea though, is that if you have log base of whatever to something else, right, anything here, if we can multiply those two things together, then instead of writing it all together, we can write it as uh, log base x of the first thing plus log base x of the second thing, okay? So log base something, right? Whatever's at the end, if they're being multiplied together, we can separate them and make it into an addition uh, problem, okay? Same thing goes for division, right? Log base x a over b, we can rewrite that as log base x of a minus log base x of b, okay? Pretty straightforward, pretty straightforward. Uh, and then our last one uh, for powers, log base x, if you have a to some, some power b, you can rewrite that as b times log base x of a. So if you have an exponent at the end of your logarithm, you can move that to the very beginning, and then you suddenly you no longer have any exponents, okay? And maybe this will be make a little bit more sense if we actually just do an example. So if we say expand log base six of three x. So I see three times x. So I know I'm looking at this first property, right, product. So I'm gonna rewrite this. I'm gonna separate the three and the x into two separate uh, logarithmic expressions. So I'm gonna say log, that's terrible. Let's try this again. I haven't written in three days log base six of three, right, plus log base six of x. And then I box it off, same done. That's it, right? It's just that simple. Don't overthink it. So you keep the base, don't change that. You take your first term, put it on the left, plus take your second term, put it on the very right. You've expanded a logarithm. Right? Nothing to it. All right, the second one, actually, I messed this up a little bit. Hold on, don't look at this yet. Okay, so we have log base eight of x minus log base eight of y. So this is actually the opposite. We wanna condense this. We wanna put this, we wanna put this back into, into one single logarithm. So since we see subtraction, we know it's our quotient property here, right? So we check, do they have the same base? Yes, so this actually works. So we can rewrite this as log base eight. We take our first, our first value here, we call that the numerator. Over, we look at the, the second logarithm, that's of y. So put that down as your denominator. Finished. Okay. So two ways we can do this. If you see one logarithm, you can expand it into two. If you see two logarithms, you can condense it back into one. Assuming, of course, for our condensing that we have the same log base. Okay. Uh, the third example, actually, before we do that one, let's actually do this. Let me erase this. Let's make this a little bit more complicated. What if? What if? What if we have some coefficients in front, right? So now we no longer just have logarithm base eight. So if we want to condense this, what we can actually do first is our, our power property here, which says if you have a coefficient in front of your logarithm, you can put that as the exponent, right, up here. So I can say instead of 24 times log base eight of x, I can say this is log base eight of x to the 24th power, right? 
right? So all I did is I just took that 24 and I put it as the power at the end, minus, and then I do the same thing for my second uh, expression here. So it's going to be log base 8 of y to the fourth power, okay? And now we're back sort of what we had before, except now we have exponents, but that's okay. We can still use our quotient property and combine these two together and say this is going to be log base 8 of x to the 24th divided by y to the 4th power. Okay? So notice the only thing that changed, if you're dealing with condensing and it's a, it's a subtraction, Right? We take those coefficients, we make them into the powers, and then we still set up a fraction. Not too bad, okay? And again, these examples are pretty straightforward. We're gonna get some more, more complicated cases tomorrow. So this is just really to get familiar. So if this seems really easy, but it also doesn't kind of make sense because like, what does this mean to us? Not too much at this point. That's okay. That's basically where we're at. We're just manipulating logarithms so we can do cool math stuff with them later. All right, our third example, uh, use log base 4 of 3 is approximately all that to approximate the value of log base 4 of 27. All right, so here's our third case. We want to actually want to solve this, but we don't want to have to use a calculator. So if it tells you the value of log base 4 of 3, that means we want to rewrite this down here so that it looks like log base 4 of 3. All right, so I'm just going to copy this down, log base 4 of 27. So I look at 27, I think, how can I get that to be just a 3? And we think back to exponents and you remember, oh yeah, 27 is 3 to the third power, right? 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. And then if I use my power property, I know I can take this exponent, this power of three, and I can bring it to the front of my logarithm. So say three times the log base four of three. And this is a four, not a y. Let's make that clear. Okay, right? So this is condensed as best we can. But now I know, I know what log base 4 of 3 is approximate, 0.7925. So then this becomes math we can actually solve. So we can say this is 3 times 0.7925, right? And then we just have to work that out in case we don't have our calculator handy. Because the whole point of this is like, what if you were at the, the SAT? And they don't give you a calculator for this question. Can we solve it? And the answer is, of course we can. That's 7, 27, 23, four decimal places. So we can say log base 4 of 27 is about 2. Point, it's about 2.38, not equals, approximately. And there you go. So if it gives you one of these, it gives you a logarithm approximation. We want to condense it down so that our logarithm looks similar to theirs, right? So you might end up with like this one here, where you have log of something plus log of something else. And then you, you uh, work out both of those and then add them together. Or like this one here, we just raise it to an exponent and then multiply it. So you just gotta think about how can we, how can we rewrite our logarithms to match the ones that it gives us, which isn't quite so bad. That sounds bad, but when you try them out, you'd be like, oh, this is easy. Stop over-hyping this, Ellis. But try them out. If you got questions, uh, let me know.